Hi guys, PJ here with another Fallout 76 video. This time I'm trying to recap on a few questions that I've been asked quite a lot when we've been streaming Fallout 76 and that is what sort of weapons, what sort of build are we now using after Wasteland? There's one Wasteland has now deployed and well everybody's using a ton of bullets and a ton of stim packs it is a problem even for higher level players. So we were doing a lot of streaming with uh, Colossal Problem etc. It was me and Jax and a couple of people were popping up saying look you know what build are you using? It's quite effective. Are you using glitched weapons or anything like that? Okay the answer is no but we have moved to a heavy weapons junkies build. So what I'm going to quickly do is go over the perk cards we're using, the buffs we're using to get the sort of damage that makes a meaningful impact on that type of event. Now then, give the game away a little bit there because I did sort of spawn in there with a the heavy weapon as you can see, but let's have a look, let's get straight into this. So, perk cards, normal perk cards, I'll go to legendary ones in a second. Let's quickly, quickly cover this. Now the most important one, in my opinion, for a heavy gun to build, especially if you're in like a power armor build, is going to be this one, batteries included. Energy weapon ammo reduced by 90%. Now you're going to be using fusion cores and plasma cores. I've got 130 odd plasma cores on me at the moment. I couldn't possibly carry them if I didn't have this perk card. I've got quite a few fusion cores as well. Okay, very important. Going back to strength, we'll start at strength. Yeah, just want to point that one out to you. Bandolier, yeah, because of course you use a normal explosive handmade, you know, or similar weapon and ballistic ammo is very heavy so this is always a handy one to keep on. I do a lot of my builds based around weight carrying ability. I don't sacrifice absolutely everything like some people do. I make sure I can still carry a decent amount of stuff. In my opinion the biggest enemy in this game is certainly not the Scorch Beast Queen. It's junk, it's weight so I concentrate on some of those perk cards. Okay, we've got Expert Heavy Gunner, 3 star, 20% damage on non-explosive heavy weapons. Now that's worth mentioning because if you've got a explosive shot minigun these cards will not buff that okay and again if you've got legacy weapons like an explosive shot uh, Gatlin plasma they won't buff it. These are for normal Gatlin plasmas, normal Gatlin lasers etc that type of thing. Heavy gunner another 20% guys, master heavy gunner another 20% so we have used 9 perk card points up to get this you know, pretty damn high to be fair. Traveling Pharmacy, like I say, weight is a big issue with this game. I've got a point there in strong back. I couldn't run the full strong back anymore because of running all the heavy gunner perk cards. Perception. Ah, there's a nuke. Okay. Perception. Master Commando, Commando, Expert Commando. Basically, all your automatic rifles are buffed with this. So for normal stuff, normal events, you can use your normal handmade or such like similar type weapon. And as you can see, these all do plus 20% damage. I won't concentrate too much on these because if you've watched my Junkies build video, you'll know that I've kept them from that previous video. Concentrated fire is always handy having a perk point in there so you can target limbs, you can cripple your enemy. So obviously you can't run at you for ghouls, etc. Very handy there. And this one at the moment, I've left on for quite a while. Now, I've actually got this to complete some sets, but if you're a heavy gunner build, it's worth keeping that on. And I'll show you why very shortly. Fireproof. Well, Scorch Beast Queen and any Scorch Beast, their sonic attack is basically classed as a flame attack, an explosion attack. This will protect you from it. Hard bargaining speaks for itself. We won't dwell on that one. Power user. Now, if you're a heavy gunner, you're probably going to use a uh, power armor a lot, which is me. So, fusion cores last 30% longer with one star. Had to put a point into that one, really. Multiple power. Your power armor weighs 75% less when maxed out. You're probably going to be carrying multiple. For example, an excavator. Um, probably something really strong like a T65 or an XO1, that type of thing. I mean, I normally run a T65. Jax when I'm streaming with her she normally runs the strangler heart armor we've both got this maxed out all your armors normally weigh 10 well with this perk card on obviously nowhere near much better demolition expert now you don't technically need this perk card I've got this because a lot of my normal automatic rifles are explosive shot and this buffs them but you don't need that for heavy gunner guys okay I've got a uh, two points in action boy so that my bats can refill quickly which is quite useful through hiker again geared towards weight there 
Bloody mess. Everyone should have this. 50% bonus damage on pretty much every single weapon there is. You'd be daft to not have it. And of course, stuff explodes and goes into a mess. Very good. The other two are to do with the mutations. The legendary perks. Okay. Now, this character's only level, I think he's 146, so I've not got a ton of them yet. Far flung fireworks. This one's hilarious. You've probably seen this one crack off if you've not used it. It detonates um, a creature and all the surrounding creatures around it will get damage. Enemies killed with a ranged weapon have 13% chance to explode. I've got that on two styles. You can max that out, of course. The next one here, survival shortcut. Generates a survival aid in chem every 30 minutes and you can store up to five. These are like a system pack super duper. They cure everything get rid of everything and help do your help as well boom I will run this one Jack's runs a different one I give Jack's some of these basically when I hit five so we sort of work it together until we've got more points to find more cards and this one if like me you play the game pretty much in a team all the time yourself and whoever you play with should run this perk card taking one for the team enemies take 20 percent damage when they attack you if you're on team please note that's at two star rated so obviously 10 percent 20 percent it goes up yeah you can get four stars as you can see guns try and keep this sweet and short and sweet short and sweet sweet and short and short and sweet okay so let's have a look what effect all those perk cards have there's my Gatling Plasma. It does 125 damage. The normal Gatling Plasma does what? Under 40, around 40, something like that. So that's my power weapon. And if you're doing something like Colossal Problem, using a lot of stim packs, you could do worse and get a Vampire Gatling, whoops, Gatling Laser. Not as powerful, granted, 49 damage there. But it will keep you alive, guys. You won't have to concentrate on the little Wendigos running around, you can concentrate on Earl and ignore them, they can, you know, attack you or the one. This thing fires that fast, it keeps your health at max all the time without using stim packs. So it's an option. Now then, buffs. Buffs do work on this stuff, so although you've got your perk cards all sorted, 125 damage, yeah? If we go to aid and take, say, a psycho stats, I'll show you how stuff files on top quickly. If you're an older player, you already know all this stuff, but newer players may not. So if we take that, we're now 137 damage. And remember earlier on, I mentioned a perk card for looking for bobbleheads. Right, let's go. I hope I've got one. Uh, bobblehead big guns. Constantly on the lookout for bobblehead big guns. Okay, let's activate that. 149 damage from my Gatlin Plasma. Now there are other things you can do, magazines, etc. And they will keep stacking. So it's not quite like a bloody build, but very good. Hopefully guys, this was of some help. And that's it. That's a wrap. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.